Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today is called Golden Field. It's a 5x10, and I did it about three or four months ago. That was fairly recent. Um, this is one of these ones where I'd, I'd, I'd had the um, constituent materials together, but hadn't actually done my archive video. And, uh, you know, I'm one day I'm hoping to have a full-time assistant that I can have do all these auxiliary uh, tasks. Um, unfortunately, I don't, so it's just me. But um, that's okay. Not complaining. Pretty happy uh, with my life, and uh, we get it all done anyway. Um, the interesting thing now, unfortunately, I did all this. Uh, I did an audio recording once already only to discover that my my video program had uh, recorded it all at chipmunk speed. <laughs> That's never happened before, and I'm sure hoping it doesn't happen now. Because, um, I, I don't know, it was a pretty good little talk. And uh, I'm going to try and hit some of the points in that that I hit uh, before. The first thing I um, was sort of talking about was this scene itself. I've had this um, idea for a painting for... Um, 10 years now and uh, I took a couple of uh, cracks at it um, early on maybe seven years ago and uh, failed miserably and one of the um, actually it's a scene that uh, it's based on the scene from my first trip to New Zealand and it was uh, summertime and uh, this was out on the west coast um, area of New Zealand here and um, I saw a lot of potential in the scene for a painting and even had some interesting colors uh, in mind and set up, but um, I, well, I can tell you where I failed, first of all, uh, was this uh, clump of trees that's on our left. The actual trees in the scene are this type of, um, like a cypress type of tree with a very spiky um, sort of uh, frond or branch and um, while they look pretty decent in real life but sorry there'll be some blips there and my phone rang as I was recording this so just one of those days but we're gonna <clears throat> struggle through also notice my levels were spiking at um, well hey recently I, I just had my uh, computer in the shop and um, had him do a little swap on the hard drive and that actually worked out pretty good it was one of these SSDs it was really cramped and I took it to the guy and bought a larger SSD and he just copied everything over and boom Bob's your uncle that's what English people say Bob's your uncle a lot anyway um, so I, I did a struggle painting from the scene I don't remember it I think I painted over it or destroyed it it was really unhappy um, but I had to reference around. I kept thinking, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Um, and I did, and I'm pretty happy with this. It's, you know, it's not maybe the greatest painting i ever done, but it's it's good. It has really nice colors, has a good composition. Um, it has a different sort of composition, which is what I like about it. And uh, uh, I'm sharing it with you today, so... Um, couple things uh, that uh, I faced is some challenges in this uh, painting where you see uh, right next to those trees is like two kind of clumpy bushes um, which are quite dark and emphasized there um, uh, you'll see uh, in the uh, final painting where uh, I solved those those are compositional um, those are a compositional nightmare because they're a little strong while well, they're kind of connected to the tree mass so they're not the, as bad as if they were completely isolated um, they still had to be dealt with and the way I dealt with them was by knocking them way back and uh, that was a good solution and uh, the type of solution that I would come up with only now after having done thousands of paintings uh, it's funny how um, I've really had to make every possible mistake and some sometimes still do although 
I have to say I'm, I'm very pleased that I'm making a lot less um, bad paintings now. I have some that are really good and then some that are just good. And uh, I'll set it for just good. I, I, what I, the way I like to put it is that it's, uh, it's saleable, you know, I can sell it and I'm not uh, ashamed to put my name on it and I'm happy to have it hanging someone's home and I have noticed that people will relate to different paintings in different ways and uh, it's very interesting uh, to see how some people will really like paintings that I don't think are especially great and they think they're my best work, my strongest work, um, which you know um, Maybe they're right. Who knows? Art history ultimately will be the final judge. Uh, as the artist, I do have a say, but um, and you know, my my opinion is uh, better be important because I'm the guy making all the decisions. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's sometimes you can do something and not really see its greatness until you get feedback from other people and then you go oh yeah okay another thing is too you notice that um, as you move through your life creating and you create a, a body of work you'll see that there were highlights and things that you uh, wouldn't couldn't possibly do again and not because you're not just as good or better but because what you're doing is an expression of the the time and place you're in and the level of consciousness that you have at the time of creation and in many ways these these paintings works of art music um, they all come from the universe they all come from someplace sort of outside of us and uh, we take ownership of them and, uh, of, and I'm not saying we shouldn't of course but it's a very interesting and mysterious process, very magical, and uh, one of the reasons I'm so involved with creation uh, of music and art is uh, because of my fascination with that, and um, just the great feeling you get when when something when something really neat and something beautiful is um, is you know now in the world that, that wasn't before it's it's a awesome feeling and uh, what can I say it requires a lot of work and effort to get there but you know if you put that time and effort in um, you can't help but be pretty good at some point yeah so um, let's see I've been uh, looking at uh, some uh, some videos and things and I um, came across a statement I thought was just really great pertaining to pertaining to marketing and this is not a channel where I do a lot of marketing um, but this does pertain to creating art and to creating paintings and the statement goes like this it goes be the best it's the only market that's not crowded and <laughs> I love that a bit of a frog in my throat um, what else can you do if you're an artist but try and, and be the best uh, try and create good work that is uh, meaningful to others and to yourself and um, you know is bringing something good into the world and one of the reasons that I sort of turned my back on uh, commercial art and making um, you know loads of money um, as a hired gun commercial um, illustrator was because so many of the things that I was lending my insight consciousness and connection to the universe to were just things I didn't care about or things that were very temporary or in some cases like uh, dinosaurs I mean a bunch of meat-eating dinosaurs with razor-sharp teeth you know so it's, it's not it's not what I would ever bring into the world on my own I just was doing it to uh, get a paycheck and there's nothing wrong with that um, however there does come a time where you need to take um, take stock and go well what do I want to uh, because as a human being as a creator you have a um, you have a responsibility to use that um, to, to bring something good into the world that's how I see it you know uh, you could use it to make money 
or you could use it for um, malevolent purposes, I guess. Um, or you could use it to, in my case, I'm trying to bring in something that's uplifting and beautiful. Even though it's also a bit moody and a bit mysterious, you know, it's still... Uh, I don't know, it's really... It, this is getting a little heady because this is tying into the whole purpose of existence and all that stuff, which, you know, this is not such a great forum, but come by my studio uh, when we're having coffee one day, and uh, this is the kind of stuff you get an earful of. <laughs> uh, what you're getting is me talking over a sped up video, but uh, this is a lot of philosophizing goes on in the studio, and uh, it's all good. Um, Let's see if I have anything else to say about this painting. Oh, I'm really happy with the way those trees turned out on the uh, on our left-hand side, uh, considering that the actual trees in the reference photograph are spiky, weird, cypressy-looking trees, and uh, these work great. They, they work as a little framing device. The one thing that I've often thought about when looking at this is we have these uh, these sort of uh, bushes off in the uh, middle. Um, that are a bit dark, and I had really contemplated uh, doing a bit of scumble or something to push those back, and who knows if this was a larger painting, I might have done that, but I've um, I thought about it quite a lot, and I decided to keep them as they're sort of acting as a bit of a framing device on their own, so we're being forced down the road, you know, into the field and then back towards the mountains and clouds and for that reason I think the composition is pretty successful because it's moving the eye and uh, I'm, I'm using the uh, the darker masses in the foreground and in this case middle ground uh, as framing devices but were I to do this say as a uh, 7 by 14 or something I might have I might have adjusted that a bit, um, and as it as it stands, it, it might have been a good idea here too. I'm still looking at it, still thinking about it, but um, ah, I'm, I'm going to do another painting. Is what I'm going to do instead. You you really should just keep moving. You know, you can tweak these paintings to death if you're not careful. It's good to leave the life and and breadth of um, of movement, of creation in them, and not choke it all out with a bunch of second guessing. And that's the thing too, every time you sit down to work at the painting, you have a different le le level and layer of consciousness at that time, and that's going to um, affect the work. Anyway, we're kind of close to the end. Looks like this audio is working out okay today. Sorry for the little hiccups you'll hear. Um, I'll be back uh, over the weekend with another video, and uh, appreciate uh, all of you tuning in, and uh, if you have any questions, just leave a question in the comment, or send me an email. See you real soon. Meanwhile, please take good care. Stay out of trouble.